wanted to to discuss um what your thoughts are on the future of orthopedic trauma just maybe briefly like just in terms of where you think trauma is yeah. going because i tell you why i'm asking because you know i look at the operations that we do and i mean i'll make an example with our bread and butter which is a femur nail you know and i look at this and like actually if you wanted to improve a femur nail like what could you possibly do you know like, or, or to improve the whole operation because i mean my short career has happened to span like three i think you know uh three eras you know because i started orthopedics when we we're still doing kuncha nails you know okay, so we, yeah. o- we open the fracture site yeah. and deliver the ends and put the nail you know so it, have, have you ever done one of those Peter? no have you? i've never done a kuncha no no like kuncha open nail. reduction no no Ah, no, you that's... missed out. It was the best. Like it's actually the first big operation that we did for, in, in orthopedics. You know, because <laughs> it's a nice transverse femur fracture. Of course, your fracture side open, and like I said you deliver the bone ends, and you can see the oh fracture. Oh my god! Oh. Like, two, like two tubes looking at you. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so, so, so that was nice. <laughs> Then of course came the first generation. Now, um, look, of course they were around everywhere else in the world. Just mm. the first time I used if, uh, like a f- um, interlocking nail was probably around 2002. You know, yeah. so, so I started using those, and then of course the entry point was like um, piriform fossa. Now you've got like they've changed the entry point now to trochanteric entry. So I'm like. So I don't think you can change the entry point again, you know, like, and if you look at the femur nail itself, like what can you do with the femur nail? Like, I don't know. So, and then I thought actually probably the only thing that could potentially still improve is the instrumentation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, and I, so, so uh, to answer the question, what's the future of orthopedic trauma or trauma in general? Um, yeah, I, I would agree with you that implants are getting better and better, but that you're getting diminishing returns with every, every improvement. And most of the improvements now are not actually in the implant themselves. Uh, it's actually in, yeah. in the instrumentation and therefore making it easier for a, a, a broader population of surgeons to use. So you have to be less uh, so you know, people are still around the country, around the world using the sign nail and doing an amazing job with it. So yeah. you know, a, a very what you might call primitive implant, yet being used very widely and in expert hands, that works really well. It's just that you do have to have expert hands to use to, to use it to get great results with it. Um, so yeah. I don't think any the future of trauma is not looking awesome because there's going to be amazing femoral nails in five years time. I think yeah. that there are two things that are going to change uh, in the future. One is around <clears throat> biologics and we, people are predicting a biological revolution, aren't they? That's the thing people talk about. Um, that to aug- has, augment fracture <clears throat> healing. <clears throat> to augment mm. everything, to, yeah. to, to, to transform a uh, disease process in general, cancer, uh, infection mm. and of course bone healing will be in, as part of that as well so the the biologic trans uh, you know um uh, revolution hasn't really happened yet but it's it people are talking about it having a massive impl- impact like the internet did mm. like the industrial revolution did that kind of change so that will come but it hasn't come yet um the other thing that that's 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 you know Nigel Rossiter talks around really really eloquently is around trauma as a as a global pandemic. It's still the biggest killer of people. Trauma is the biggest killer of people yeah. uh, between the age of uh, five and thirty. Uh, you know globally and by a massive massive country mile. And no, and, and and that's not just in the third world, but it is it is more so in developing countries. But it's nonetheless massive, uh, and. Very little work has been done on injury prevention, and I think one of the things that's going to transform that in the Western world, at least, will be will be automated vehicles. So, so when we move to automated vehicles that just drive themselves, and yeah. uh, that will that will just made road safety so much better, better for pedestrians, better for cyclists. Motorcycles will, will, will be will be basically banned because on, on public roads because they're too dangerous, and yeah. and and life will become very much safer over the next twenty years. Would be my prediction. Yeah. Uh, it, what were you going to say, Sotombe? You had a thought on that. Yeah. No, I was going to say. Funny, you know, you should talk about you know the injury, or the trauma, pandemic, or epidemic, mm. because one of the reasons I joined Global Surgery for specifically for injury prevention is exactly that, that, you know, you look at how many people are killed by malaria, HIV and TB, you know, 
combined, you know, mm. like, because everyone talks about those three diseases as like the biggest killers. They get the funding. And, um, That's where Bill Gates goes with his money, right? Money. Yes, yeah, they get all right. the money. Yes, they get all the money. And yet trauma kills three times more people than those three, yeah. That's like, right. than yeah. the big three, you know. So it's, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, you completely and, support the efforts then yeah. towards that. I don't, and so I, I, it really struck me when I went to, uh, I, I did a visit to Cairo and we were being driven around Cairo by, by, by a taxi driver. And it's, you know, and they obviously drive like total lunatics over there. There's no real yeah. rules. There are no lines on the road. Or this anything. is a limousine driver, yeah, by yeah. the way. Yeah. And so they're driving very high speed around these things. And it is, it is, it is absolutely nobody is wearing a, a seatbelt mm. and you actually yeah. have a little a special seatbelt clip that you cut off and then you put it in the thing so that it doesn't alarm at you oh, it doesn't modern beep, beep, that's right so, so, so that i must do that then Please. and and uh it, it is just you know the whole culture around road safety there is just no mindset around it and how can you expect to move away from being a developed world mentality until you embrace road safety and that's something yeah. that uh, uh that the, the guys at um uh at, at the uh, ganga hospital talk about a lot in, in terms yeah. of you know road safety is something that is a metric that one of those metrics that defines a developed world versus a developing in, yeah. in that it's, yeah. it's can i can i add something as well that coming from it sorry mm. coming from it slightly different uh, point of view as a guy who's predominantly a, a knee surgeon a sports surgeon predominantly who does trauma as well I think the thing that we're really lacking in is, is rehabilitation because mm. our x-rays are getting better and better, but I'm not sure our yeah. outcomes are getting much better. And I think the thing that we could improve the most would be our rehabilitation after trauma. Yep, I would agree with that. Isn't that like a new specialty in the US now? Like, there's like a rep. Look, I'm not sure if it's got to do mostly with the elderly people in the old age homes, mm. but there's certainly like a move towards having rehabilitation as a specialty. You know. Yeah, and I think that I think it's going to grow for sure, because the fact mm. is, you know, our functional, out, no matter how good our X-rays look, our functional outcomes, I'm not sure, are uh, uh, X-fold better than they were 20 years ago. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. And, and because we, we we as orthopedic surgeons, we put so much emphasis on bony reduction and getting the alignment yeah. perfect, and yeah. you see them back in clinic having not had any rehab whatsoever, and all of that uh, agonising interoperatively. Yeah, uh, looks looks really quite quite childish yeah. almost because yeah. because the outcome is governed so much by by the by the rehab yeah. afterwards. Yeah.